Good morning, and welcome to our worship at First Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Selma, where all are welcome, and all means all. We are glad you are here with us today. On this 13th Sunday of Pentecost, may God speak to us and show us the way to respond to others in true Christian love. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We gather as a community of compassion and hope. Jesus calls us to care for each other tenderly and willingly. By this caring and sharing, we will be known as followers of Jesus. By our example, others may be led to lives of peace. Where there is true charity and love, there God is found. As the love of Christ draws us together, let us sing our song of praise.
Christ calls each of us into lives of service and hope, and he equips us for these ministries and places us on the pathways of peace. May we be shown these ways as we enter into a spirit of prayer. Creator God, who made the universe and everything it contains, you hung the stars in the sky, set the planets on their courses, gave us the sun and the moon to rule over day and night. You created the earth and all the creatures inhabiting land and sea and sky. You provided the plant life that provides food to sustain us, and beauty of all nature to inspire us. And you put us in the middle of it all as stewards and caretakers of your creations. We give you thanks for the bounty of the earth. Right now, Lord, the earth itself is in turmoil. 
Thousands of lightning strikes set forests ablaze in California. An inland hurricane crushed the Midwest. An Atlantic hurricane devastated the Gulf Coast and continues through the Tennessee Valley. Lives and homes and crops have been lost. May those who have lost loved ones or have nowhere to go and don't know what to do next, no comfort in your love. And may we who serve you help them in best ways we know how. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. With so many crises facing us, it's hard to know which to focus on first. A pandemic, natural disasters, social unrest, political clashes. We argue over everything. No issue or opinion is so small that someone won't fight over it. May we keep your commandment to love one another, to give even our enemies food and drink, to outdo one another in showing honor and live in harmony with each other. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We would ask you to guide our leaders, Lord, elected and appointed at every level of government. May they remember that they are responsible for and to the people they represent. May they seek solutions for all the problems we are facing. May they seek your will in making decisions, especially right now when elections loom large and they may become distracted from governing. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We ask your care for those who care for us, for first responders, health care providers, and all the staff in hospitals and care facilities, for essential workers of all kinds, teachers and school staff for parents trying to teach their children and still work. May they be safe and well, be given the tools they need to do their job, and may we remember to thank them for their service. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We ask you to place your healing hand on the sick and injured and those recovering from illness or injury, for those undergoing treatments for cancer and other conditions, for the chronically ill and those who suffer pain, for the homebound and all suffering mental illness, for the unemployed, unhoused, uninsured. We lift into the silence all of these and our own special intentions. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we have come to worship you. We have come to give you praise. We have come to offer ourselves to you and to give you thanks for your love and for the gift of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reading. From the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine. 
Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will reap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. In our prayer this morning, we ask blessings on all those affected by the natural disasters, including the California wildfires, the inland hurricane in the Midwest, and Hurricane Laura on the Gulf Coast. Week of Compassion is the relief fund of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ and works with partners like local congregations and regions of the disciples to alleviate suffering throughout the world if you want to help people who have been affected by any of these recent natural disasters, please send a donation to the Week of Compassion and write what you want the money to go to on the memo line of your check or in a comment section on their website. You can find the Week of Compassion information on our website, www.selmadisciples.com. I know some people who think that we really don't need the Old Testament at all. We have a new covenant with God through Jesus Christ with all new teachings, which replaces all the old. And then we come to a passage in the Gospels that talks about fulfilling the words of the prophets, or this one in Paul's letter to the Romans, in which Paul quotes Proverbs 25, verses 21 and 22. If your enemies are hungry, give them bread to eat. And if they are thirsty, give them water to drink. For you will heap coals of fire on their heads, and the Lord will reward you. This was not new information for the early Christians. It is, in fact, an extension of the law of hospitality, which was practiced throughout the ancient world and even on through medieval times. If anyone, friend, stranger, or even an enemy, shows up at the door seeking food or water or shelter, you provide what they need, period. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Now, I am probably not alone in having thought that this meant me being helpful to someone who had hurt me would really upset them, and because it would be silly of them to complain to others I'd been helpful when they needed help, that would upset them even more. They might even spend time and energy worrying about when my real revenge would come and what form it would take. As a method of getting even, this is pretty cool. But what to do about that pesky, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, quote from Deuteronomy, which comes right before this. If vengeance is God's, why am I being given instructions on the world's coolest revenge? The people of Paul's time would have read that whole heaping burning coals on their headline entirely differently than we do. In those days, 
The only fire a family had was kept in a brazier, which they used for simple cooking as well as warmth, and was always kept burning. If it should go out, some member of the family will take the brazier to a neighbor's home to borrow fire. <clears throat> she could give them a few coals, just enough to get the fire started again, or she could be extravagant and heap coals into the brazier, which they would then carry home on their heads. To feed an enemy and give him drink was like heaping the empty brazier with live coals, which meant food, warmth, and almost life itself to the person or home needing it, and was the symbol of the finest generosity. This kind of generous hospitality is a means of showing extravagant love for the other. In fact, it is much more likely to create a friend than hurt an enemy. There's a well-known quote, the only safe and sure way to destroy your enemy is to make him your friend, which was originally said by Mark Twain, or maybe Abraham Lincoln, or perhaps 15th century emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, Sigismund of Luxembourg. No one knows for sure, but this sentiment is what the heaping burning coals on your enemy's head is all about, ending anger, anger and hatred through love. Live in harmony with one another. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. If we were to condense this passage down to its most basic meaning without reverting to love one another, I think maybe this would be it. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So far as it depends on you. Clearly it is not possible to control the words and actions of others. Any parent, whether their child is a toddler or a teen or an adult, knows this. How we respond to the words and actions of others, however, does depend on us. If we're upset by the words or actions of another, if, for example, we take insults thrown around in political or religious conversations personally, we can choose to respond in kind, repaying evil for evil, or we can respond peacefully with an attitude of love, taking thought to what is noble in the sight of all. I have to tell you, it is pretty ugly out there I mean, it's one thing when politicians and their handlers throw personal insults at the opposition. We don't like that. We would prefer if they stuck to the issues, but we all know that this has become normal in political campaigning. But when I see my friends and colleagues, ministers and other religious leaders on both sides of the political divide, also stooping to name calling and demonizing the opposition, you know, we are supposed to be better than that. Christians are supposed to be better than that. Mind you, I do see some who respond to the ugliness and personal insults politely and with respect for the other person's opinion. I see some who are able to ignore the name calling and calmly discuss the issue at hand. I see some who do not lump all whatevers into the same box. I do see some who, while they may indeed become angry over issues and situations, do nevertheless control their response, who seek to show honor to one another by listening to their opinions respectfully and peacefully. But I see way too many on both sides of the political and religious divides who do repay ugliness with ugliness, who do resort to personal insults and name calling for whom logic has flown out the window, for whom every issue has one right and one wrong situation. Everything is either this or that. There is no in between, no possibility of both and, no room for compromise. 
and to allow their emotions to lead them. Daily, I am reminded of a line in that 1967 hit song, For What It's Worth, nobody's right if everybody's wrong. Christians are supposed to be better than that. Christians are supposed to love one another with mutual affection. Christians are supposed to try to outdo one another in showing honor, like Chip and Dale, the cartoon chipmunks, who spend so much time saying, after you, no, after you, no, really, after you, that they finally have to walk through the doorway together. Christians are supposed to walk through the doorway together. We don't have to agree, but we do have to genuinely love one another. We do have to hate what is evil. We do have to overcome evil with good. We do have to live in harmony with each other. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. This is hard. Sometimes it really does seem impossible. It is so easy to get dragged into an argument, to get sidetracked from important conversations, to allow anger or hurt feelings to take over. Sometimes we think the only way to react to attacks and insults is to attack back and call it self-defense. We might even decide that the best defense is a good offense and engage in what one of our previous presidents called proactive self-defense. But, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. If your enemies are hungry, give them bread. If they are thirsty, give them water. We are Christians. The food and drink we have to offer is love. And the best revenge is love. Radical love. Extravagant love. Heaping coals of burning love. And the world we all know we are Christians by our love. It's been 25 weeks since we last worshiped together here in the sanctuary. 25 weeks of wearing masks, social distancing, and having one of the most important parts of our worship service, communion at home. I'm sure you're all using different elements. Today, mine are wheat thins each and every Sunday, but because we can imagine taking communion with everybody who's used to be in this room, it somehow makes it a little better. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples for one last meal. He took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. And after supper, he took the cup and poured it and said, this is my blood spilled for you as a new covenant. Drink this in remembrance of me. Please pray with me. God of wisdom, you have invited each of us to your table. We are humbled to be here in your presence and give you thanks for this time of remembrance. As we eat the bread and drink the cup, may the Holy Spirit remind us that Christ died for each of us. He is available to us in these symbols. Let us offer our lives to Jesus as we come to his table. Amen.
As God has blessed our lives with abundant love and gifts, let us remember to present our tithes and offerings to this place, seeking to help others, to offer comfort and hope. Giving is a part of our worship to God. Let us give with great joy and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Lord of all mercy and compassion, Bless the gifts lovingly offered each week and bless all those worshiping with us now and those who will at a later time. Help us to use these gifts for ministries of hope through our church and into our community, nation, and world. In the beautiful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Why does it seem like each week as we meet together for worship, learning how to be a true, genuine Christian, striving to share true, genuine Christian love, and striving for true, genuine Christian unity gets more daunting and more challenging? Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Why would we want to do that to our enemies and to those who have hurt us? Let us not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. That's pretty vivid, but I guess kill with kindness, right? It's challenging and it's complex. However, it allows us to be a bigger person. It allows us to grow. It allows us to be the true, genuine Christian I'm sure we all want to be sharing God's almighty and unconditional love as Christ would. Let your love be genuine. Let us love one another with mutual affection. Let us not lag in zeal, but be enthusiastic in spirit and serve the Lord. We rejoice in hope. We are patient in suffering, and we persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. We rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Let us live in harmony with one another. It's what God calls us to do. It's what Jesus taught his disciples during his ministry. It's what the Holy Spirit helps us with and unfolds us and guides us if we allow. Let us ask the Lord to open our hearts and minds this day to share the goodness of his unconditional love and may we be taught to serve him and others with all our gifts and talents.
into the world in the confidence that God goes with you. Go boldly into the world in the confidence that God is guiding your steps in paths of peace and healing. Go boldly into the world and bring the good news of God's love to all you meet. From this very place, go in peace to love and serve our almighty God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thanks for